Okay, well, thanks everybody for being here today. Um, we're excited to take you through an overview of what Emerging Women Leaders is and how you can become a member if you're interested. So um, we'd like to start with some introductions of the folks that are gonna be talking to you for this first section. Um, and then we'll jump right in. So everybody's probably muted right now. Um, you can use the chat function for any questions. We'll definitely have time towards the end um, to take a look at those and answer anything that we see coming through there. So um, I guess I'll start even though I'm in the middle of the page. Hi, I'm Fran. Um, I am co-chair of the EWL membership. So I'll be working with our committee and Maggie, who you'll meet in a moment um, as uh, we have new members interested um, and through the nominations and sort of welcome process. So it's nice to meet you. Uh, my day job is at GMR Marketing where I'm VP of Client Services and I have been an EWL member for five years. Maggie, you wanna say hi? Sure, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming and enjoying your lunch with us. I'm Maggie Jost. I am the co-chair for membership here and I joined EWL right before uh, COVID hit. So I had a little opportunity to uh, get to know everybody in person and then enjoy all the virtual options we've had over this last year and a half, 12 years. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Um, in my day job is I am the owner of The Real Good Life, which is a meal delivery service here in town and just personal life, work life and here is all about community. So I can't wait to welcome all of you to our EWL community. And I'm last, so I'll introduce myself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Marit Harms Franzi. I work at Tempo as the Director of Emerging Women Leaders and Communications. I just celebrated six years with Tempo, which is actually the same amount of time as Emerging Women Leaders. So I joined right as this program was getting started and have really seen it evolve and grow and become the amazing community that it is. So you'll hear from me a little bit later. Welcome. Great, so um, awesome to see so many people joining us here today. So as a reminder, uh, if the attendees are muted for now, um, you're welcome to unmute later on when we have the Q&A at the end. Your video is also optional. We'll be sharing a presentation through most of this. Um, so with that, I think we can go ahead and get started. Take you through a quick agenda of what you can expect during this hour. Um, so we'll share a little bit of the history of EWL, if you don't already know, um, and also explain a little bit about what Emerging Women Leaders is. We'll definitely get into the nomination process and let you know what those details are, timing, um, next steps that you can take and when. And then um, we also have a couple members that are going to share their perspective. Uh, you'll probably hear us say this a couple times throughout this presentation, but EWL has so much to offer. Um, no one or no multiple people's journeys aren't all the same. So we love to just have a few people talk about uh, their experience. And of course, we'll have time for questions at the end. So with that, we'll jump in. And I think, Marit, you're going to give us a little bit of background, right? Yes, happy to. So I already shared a little bit of a spoiler about when EWL was founded. But to take a step even further back, Emerging Women Leaders is a initiative of Tempo and Tempo was founded in 1975. So 46 years ago, essentially by four women in Milwaukee who found themselves surrounded by white men in their workplaces, um, being excluded from different clubs, from different conversations. So they said, hey, let's make our own. So Tempo was born, fast forward to today, that four members has grown to over 450 Tempo members, really women at the executive senior level, um, pinnacle of their careers. And then 2015 is where EWL came into play, really looking at the future of Tempo, secession planning, and who are those mid-career women in Milwaukee who are the future Tempo members. So founded in 2015 with 40 members, and fast forward to today, we are at 324. So Tempo and EWL combined, we are a powerhouse community of nearly 800 women in Milwaukee from all industries, functions, titles, lots of entrepreneurs like Maggie, um, really a great diverse network of women. 
so the goals of EWL in 2015 and even prior when it was being talked about was to create a space for those mid-career up and coming women to develop. It is not for entry level women um, right out of college. It's really women who have significant experience in the workforce and are already showing leadership within their organizations. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. The goals were also to provide mentoring opportunities between the Tempo Network and the Emerging Women Leaders Network, and to really champion the next generation of Tempo members and women leaders in our community. As I mentioned, there were 40 members in that first class of EWL, 324 today, and we continue to change and evolve every year, it seems. Throw a pandemic in there, you will change a lot more. Um, so I'm just thrilled to be able to lead this community and work alongside our leaders like Fran and Maggie to make sure um, every change we make, everything we do has the member experience in mind. So EWL's mission, um, while well, Tempo's mission is to advance women leaders, and that is definitely EWL's mission as well, we have a sub-mission, which is to contact connect professional women who are community-minded change makers and inclusive up-and-coming leaders. And our vision is to be the premier organization for emerging women leaders in our community. Our core pillars are the same as Tempo's. So every program we put on, every member benefit is related to leadership, mentoring, and or networking, which you'll hear more about. EWL at a glance, I mentioned we have 324 members currently representing 215 companies. So nearly every company you could think of in Milwaukee. Um, not every, but um, most of the big companies are definitely represented. Um, top three industries, business services, finance, and then nonprofits. You can see that we do have a nice mix of private companies, public, nonprofits, government. And I'd say more and more we're seeing entrepreneurs, whether it's a member who is solely an entrepreneur or members who work at a more traditional business but have side hustles. And then you can see the top job titles represented. Um, we do not look at job titles when we're reviewing your application, but this kind of shows you that mix and title that's represented in our group. And I get to turn it back over to Fran. Okay, thanks, Marit. Uh, so here's a group shot from one of our events, I think maybe two years ago, um, with a quote from one of our members. And really just want to reiterate at this as you look at a, at a size of group of women uh, this large and the connections that are formed through um, shared experiences. And I think that's where our membership criteria really comes into this, um, which we're going to talk a little bit about. But um, this is not an uncommon sentiment that we see amongst our members, just really feeling like connection to people that have similarities, but also um, working in different industries, different experiences, uh, different personal backgrounds. Um, so it's, it's both a community of connection, but also differences. Um, and Mart mentioned our ability to network with Tempo, which is certainly an advantage. But, you know, I would argue, as this quote does, that the networks that we're building amongst each other and, and this community of women that are rising together are going to be um, tremendously valuable today and into the future. So just want to reiterate that point, show some of those smiling faces. Um, so a couple more quick facts for you. So EWL has seen um, a growth of 710%, um, and we have a retention rate of 92%. So certainly we see there is demand and need for this in the community, as well as value in the membership um, through that retention rate. 45% um, of the members serve on a committee within EWL. There's eight committees and um, it, there's a lot of different ways to be involved, which is why we want to share some individual experiences you'll hear at the end of this as well, because everybody's um, experience is a little bit different, but being involved in a committee is a great way to meet people um, and quickly dig into everything that EWL has to offer. Um, and then the mentoring opportunities really twofold in two ways, I should say. Around two thirds of the members participate in either um, our connect circles, which are going to be peer mentoring groups, 
or one-to-one -one men mentoring, which is matching um, an EWL member with a Tempo member. And both of those mentoring opportunities are open to all of our members. And then finally, just one note on our signature event. It is the annual professional development workshop. Here's hoping we're doing that in person again soon. Um, it has been uh, traditionally, or I don't know traditionally if it's five years, but in the past, it's been a full day where we've spent um, you know, a, a ton of different sessions, um, both in presentation or um, collaboration. And it's just an awesome event. It worked great last year virtually. Um, and I think we're, we're looking forward to some form of in-person or hybrid for that event coming up. Um, also worth mentioning that EWL members are um, encouraged and welcome to transition into Tempo um, when the time is right and criteria is met. To date, we've had 20 former EWL members transition into Tempo. Um, their nomination periods are a little bit different. Mara, can you please correct me on this one? How frequently are they nominated? Tempo is quarterly. Quarterly. Okay, so we are doing... EWL nominations twice a year. And so there are quarterly opportunities to transition into tempo. Um, so just quickly, we're gonna get to the EWL criteria, which is why you're here, but just want to reiterate, um, maybe you find yourself a better fit for this criteria off the bat or want to know what it's going to take to transition into tempo at some point. Um, and so it's 10 plus years of professional experience, also looking for five years of executive or senior level high managerial experience. Um, these women are defined as the organization's top executives or having direct working relationships with those top executives. They're committed to the community, which is also something you're going to hear us talk about as it relates to EWL, and um, also need that nomination from a current Tempo member. So to talk a little bit more about the EWL benefits and, uh, and the price for that. So the member dues are $385 a year. And um, you will receive all of the things listed on this slide. So all of the EWL program meetings, which are four times a year, those are included in your dues. The signature EWL professional development day, which is the event I just mentioned to you previously, uh, is also included. All of the virtual webinar series, those are taking place on monthly, as well as the Real Talk series um, right now is also virtual. We'll see how some of these things transition in the future all included. Um, there are EWL explorers and social outings, um, speed networking. This is really just a, a way to get to know our community, but also get to know members. There are the two mentoring program options, which I just talked about, which are again are open to all of our members. We have coffee connections, um, which is really picked up during this virtual way of living and working and has been an awesome opportunity for more um, direct networking through, through monthly pairings. There's the Temple Holiday Party, which is a fantastic time that is included in your dues. Um, we also have the community involvement and volunteer opportunities, the committee engagement, um, and this fantastic network of 800 women leaders as well. So the expectations, uh, what, what it would be required of you. Uh, and this is really where it comes to simply say, you get what you put into it. And so there are no formal engagement or attendance options. Um, nobody will be following up with you to necessarily give you a requirement. Um, it's really for you to navigate on your own and what's going to make the most sense for you, what you're going to get the most out of. Um, and we know that people's circumstances in life change, uh, whether you start a new job or your family is growing, a number of different things occur um, and your engagement um, can ebb and flow with, with your ability to participate. Um, and you can really choose the things that speak to you most. Uh, you will find a wide variety of, um, of women in this community. And, and so not every single program or event is going to make the most sense for you and you can choose what works for you. And um, we will have a new, orient, a new member orientation at the beginning where we really dig into everything. Um, but our engagement committee will also match you with someone to help you navigate, answer any questions um, and really, uh, just really be a nice point person and touchstone through, throughout your, your first couple months and year as, as a new EWL member. 
again, really can't overstate how many great opportunities there are. So um, you can feel like you want everything all at once or that you want to walk your way through um, a number of different things and decide what rights for you, but what's right for you. But the, the point is really that you can settle on what's going to get uh, get you to that, that value that you're expecting from an EWL membership. All right, so down to some of the details on the membership criteria. Um, we are looking for women who have six years of full-time professional experience and are identified as a dynamic and influential leader. Um, clearly one part of that is highly quantifiable. The other one is a little bit different, um, but you know who you are um, within your organizations and, and so does your leadership. Um, so again, six years is really a, a it's, it's where we draw the line. Um, internships do not, do not count against those six years. So we're really looking for women who have stepped full-time into professional world for six years. Demonstrated an ongoing commitment to the community above and beyond job expectations. Uh, we know that many of you, if you are dynamic and influential in your organization, you're probably involved in a number of things. We're really looking for that to extend into the community um, and, and community involvement will be a high priority and focus for us as we're reviewing nominations going forward. You will wanna have support from someone in leadership at your place of employment. And we'll talk about what that means in the, um, in the details of what will be submitted. Um, but I can't reiterate enough that um, most organizations in Milwaukee are aware of Tempo or aware of EWL and see high value to having their employees networked and engaged in both the professional development and the networking. And we want that to be acknowledged as you enter into membership. And then finally, you're going to need a nomination from a Tempo or EWL member. Um, if you do not currently have that relationship, um, I'd encourage you to reach out to Maggie or I, and we're happy to meet with you, um, introduce you to someone, help you along in that process, um, whether it's for our next nomination period or the following, whatever that might look like. So if that is a gap for you currently, or you're new to Milwaukee, um, definitely reach out to us. We are here to help. It's recommended that you've attended a Tempo or EW event prior, but it is not required. Um, it will help you kind of connect the dots when you're, when you're submitting your nomination, but it, it isn't completely um, required. And then I think I have one last slide before I turn it over to Maggie to talk about the materials to submit. But again, we just wanna tie back to the, the membership criteria to our values. Um, and we are looking for women who want to connect and inspire other women leaders. And that is, I think, probably tops and number one of what you will see and feel as part of the organization. Um, sharing the expertise, creating a learning community, um, you will find that most like-minded like women within the organization are looking for and providing um, information back and forth to one another. We're um, emerging women leaders. We are rising in our community and in our organizations. And so you will see a lot of highly, highly ambitious and growing um, uh, individuals in their careers and, and looking for those successes. And so uh, it's, it's great to be surrounded by that. And then finally, an inclusive membership experience. And that really is the undercurrent of everything that, uh, that we do. So that's who we're looking for. And here's how we go about that. Sure, so that sounds like a lot, but it really is pretty easy. So how this works is to apply, you do it through a nominator. And a nominator is any EWL or Tempo member. Um, and as Fran alluded to, if you already know someone, great. We're always the best cheerleaders of this organization. But if not, I appreciate that can kind of be a barrier to entry. So I and Fran and a number of folks from the membership committee would be more than happy to have a little chat with you, make sure this seems like the right fit and uh, help you through this process. So our emails and phone numbers will be at the end of the presentation. You can check those out and connect with us. Once you have that person, um, they will need a couple of things from you. So you'll need to um, update your resume, an actual PDF of your resume, and also one to two letters of support. And we'll talk about that in a second, but that's not from them, that's from someone else. What they need to write is, you know, we say a 250 word statement, it doesn't have to be exactly that, can be less, can be a little bit more, let's try to keep it less. 
um, just talking about why she thinks you are the right fit with our values here at EWL. And, you know, just like going back to college references and things we needed back then, the more you can help your nominator with some of this information, the faster it'll go. Um, but also it always feels good to have someone um, just say why they think you would be the right fit. So that is that. And so then what you need to gather there, as we talked about, of these one to two letters of support. So we need one of those letters to be from someone in a leadership position at your place of employment. Probably, hopefully, that would be your direct manager who knows how you work and um, also knows a little bit about what your life is like outside of work. If that's not an appropriate person to ask, you can go up the food chain or kind of up and sideways of the food chain, but we need it to not be a peer. We need it to be somebody who is a leader above you at your organization. Um, if you are an entrepreneur like me and you live a life without a boss, number one, it's a great life, but two, there's some problems with it. Like you don't have someone to do these kinds of things. Shoot me an email and we can figure out what, who would be the appropriate stand-in for that. And then if you like, if there's someone else that you think would add to your application and maybe give a little different story of your background, your um, then you can have another one that can be a peer that can maybe be someone from one of the uh, charity you work with or something else out there um, to explain your story a little more. Current resume, like we talked about. And then um, we'll collect those applications. There's a two week period and we'll talk about dates here in a second. We'll get all these things together. And then the membership committee gets together and then doles out all the applications we have. And at that point, this is gonna change a little bit this year. So your nominator might uh, question when you say this is what happens. In the years past, we've called the nominator and talked to them about you. We've realized that that's just kind of regurgitating what's in the application. So this year we're gonna call you and talk to you about uh, just your background and why you're interested in EWL. So these are the few questions that we will talk about at that time, talking about leadership, why you're interested, and uh, community involvement and what you can contribute. And let's take a second with that community involvement and what exactly that means. This is anything that's kind of an ongoing um, activity within the city of Milwaukee that can take a number of different ways. If, if you're on a board for a nonprofit or if you, you know, do a lot of volunteer hours actually, you know, organizing cans at the hunger task force or, um, I don't know, being on a fundraising committee for a cancer society, any of that kind of stuff. But then also, are you really involved in your kids PTO? Do you coach the soccer team? Do you, are you a welcome committee at your church? Just anything that shows that you are doing more for your community, not just in the name of getting paid, but also just putting out some good, good vibes out there. And I think that's it there. So here is our timeline of what's going to happen. So between September 20th and October 4th, that's when the nomination period will be open. So I would say right now, start thinking about uh, who is going to be your nominator if you want to apply uh, right now. Um, figure out who that is, try to get a coffee date, virtual date, or in person to start talking about some of these details. I believe a sample application will be there if it's not already. So you'll be able to see exactly what things we need. So we have that time period. And then in October, that's when our membership committee will get together and dole out those applications. And by November, we'll hopefully have had all those phone calls take place and we will notify all new members. And uh, something I thought about when I went through this is just, oh man, what if they don't like me? It made me think back to going through sorority recruitment and just, you know, am I wearing the right dress? Am I saying the right things? It really, if you have those qualifications we need, if you've been in a um, in an appropriate role for six years, if you're showing some community involvement, that's it. We're not going to kick anybody out because we don't like the color of your hair or what earrings you're wearing. That this is really about bringing as many people in as we possibly can. So then in November, we would tell you who's coming on. We would have this new member orientation and set you up with a buddy to get into the system and have you there in time to hopefully have an in-person holiday meeting.
So here we go. So you're going to prepare all of your materials right now. Start working with your nominator. You'll submit those materials between September 20th and October 4th, which is coming up so surprisingly fast. I can't believe September 1st is tomorrow. And then um, we'll try to get connected with you. And it'll be a short phone call and say 15, 30 minutes max that we would get together. Love doing Zoom just to be able to see your face. But if you're all Zoomed out, we can absolutely just do a phone call as well. So with that, I think we have some folks that want to tell us about their experience with EWL. And Fran or Mart, I'm not sure who's uh, turning them over. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So before that, we did mention it's recommended to attend an event before joining, if you can. One, so you know what you're getting into and that this fits your professional goals. Um, and then two, to meet other awesome women in our community. So highly, highly recommend this event coming up. If you can make it, we have a virtual option and an in-person option back to providing that inclusive member experience for everyone. Um, the registration information is on the screen here, but this is one of our most popular programs. It's the fourth annual, and it's really like a mini TED talk. So we select um, members to speak on a certain theme. This year it is silver lining, super appropriate after uh, what we've all been through with COVID. So these are actually five current EWL members that will be sharing their stories in five minutes. So highly recommend that you attend if you can. And then I'm not sure if Angie is on yet. So maybe we'll start backwards. So pleased to have three current members with us today to really drive home the point that EWL looks different for everyone. You can see that they all join in different years and you will hear that they all engage in different ways. So I will start with Isioma. Hi, good afternoon, ladies. As Marit mentioned, my name is Isioma Wabuzer. Um, I serve as Vice President and Associate General Counsel at Robert W. Baird, um, and also as President of my own nonprofit organization, The Dreamer Next Door Incorporated. Um, as you can see reflected on the screen here, I joined EWL in 2019, and so I'm currently in my third year. Um, my first year, I sort of just wanted to get familiar with everything, and so I went to as many offerings as possible truly wanted to understand the lay of the land. Um, and that is a recommendation I make to anyone considering or who eventually joins EWL. We offer a slew, um, a plethora of different events, whether it's professional development, um, you know, whether it's EWL Explorers, where we get to sort of get a behind the scenes look at some of local or some local organizations, particularly women owned businesses. Um, just a, a slew of things. We get tempo events. We have our one-to-one -one mentoring. Um, which is, I think, one of the best offerings and the best assets of EWL, where you, where you get paired with a professional woman in tempo as your mentor. We have EWL Connects and our Connect Circles, where you have this sort of camaraderie and circle and sisterhood of fellow EWL women women throughout your um, engagement here in EWL. And so there's a ton of offerings, um, for lack of better words. And so I wanted to get a feel of everything. And so I went to as many events as possible. And it's so funny, right after my first year, I jumped in head first um, and applied to be an EWL leadership co-chair. Um, and so just for contextual purposes, um, EWL has four leadership co-chairs every year, um, each serving two year staggered terms. And so you have two that serve two and then the other two serve two together. Um, but at any given time, again, there's four. And so my second year, um, I jumped in head first and I currently serve, I'm in my second year as EWL leadership co-chair. And it has been an amazing experience um, getting exposure to all the wonderful women in EWL and helping to galvanize this group and organization um, forward. Um, now, full transparency, I'm a single woman, childless woman. And so, um, 
you know, I think it's important to note that you make this experience what you want to be. I have, I may arguably have a bit more capacity than other women. And so you don't have to go to everything. You don't have to do everything. Um, and just make this experience what works for your schedule and what, what works for your spouse's schedule and what works for your children's schedule. Um, so I had a bit of laxity, again, to do as much as I, uh, I could and as I wanted to. Um, but it has been an amazing experience thus far. And I think that's evidenced by my continued engagement and currently serving as EWL Leadership Co-Chair. And so, again, I see a ton of familiar faces here today. So glad to have each of you. And if I can serve as a resource in any way or any capacity, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks, Isiyama. So I'm going to just interview you real quick. So what is your advice for all of these ladies on the call? Yeah, so here? my first piece of advice is understand what you're getting into. Um, you know, I, th I think sometimes there's a reference to a sorority and there's some similar elements, um, but this is, and it, it, it's a ton of camaraderie and in a, a, a circle of women, formidable, formidable women in the community, um, but just getting a true understanding of what EWL is. Um, we are, are honored enough and privileged enough to have high engagement in EWL, truly, truly high engagement. Um, and I think that's indicative of what we have to offer, but not only that, the type of women we bring in, and we don't wanna see that uh, engagement falter. And so just truly get, get an understanding of, and a sense of what you're getting into. Um, another thing I kind of wanna make clear from the outset is that while we're looking to um, have women in EWL who are Milwaukee's next C-suite leaders, this is not a direct segue into tempo. Right. And this is not a way to just sort of <laughs> leech from those resources over there. We want people who are truly involved and committed in this organization. And if so, for some reason, because we have this occasionally, you think you're a better fit for Tempo, please reach out now and ask those questions. And we can tell you where you truly are aligned. Obviously, they're the same organization um, and we have relationships with them. But EWL is truly its own strong group. <laughs> right. And, it, and it's, it's slightly different programming. And so just understanding that as well. And yeah, again, just get re being really sure of what, you, uh, what you're signing yourself up for. If you feel like you're not ready, if you feel like you don't have the time, maybe not now, but later, right? And that's perfectly fine. Um, but just really understand the lay of the land. Thanks, Isioma. And to your point, now would be this next upcoming nomination period, September and we take nominations twice a year. So the following would be in March. So if now doesn't seem like the right time, you will always have another opportunity in six months. Angela, thanks for being on. Will you share a little bit of your story? Sure, can you hear me okay? Yep. Thanks everyone, afternoon. Um, so I, um, as, as mentioned, I joined in 2020. Um, right before everything went down, I actually had the opportunity to participate in a couple of in-person events um, in 2019. Um, very, very engaged group of, of women, um, both in EWL and Tempo. So sincerely appreciate the opportunity to be connected um, to all of you guys or the opportunity to be connected anyways. Um, during the day, I'm, I'm a finance director at EUA. Um, we're down here in, in the third ward. And um, I, I've appreciated being connected with EWL in, in many, for many different reasons. Um, made a couple of notes, you know, over the years, there's been a variety of, of knowledge sharing across the group. Um, and then the network of, of different women and different experiences has truly been priceless. So I encourage all of you guys to continue considering being a part of this great group that's obviously exploding and, and growing in our, in our areas. Um, and then Merritt, you mentioned, you know, one piece of advice. Um, one of the things that originally came to mind for me was just get connected. Um, if, if it's not with EWL uh, or Tempo or, you know, another area group, um, find somewhere to be connected in, in the professional space. Um, for that, I, I also am part of a nonprofit in the area. And um, yeah, it's just very rewarding to, to be connected in the, with the community and others um, in the professional world. Thanks, Angela. Yep. So I saw Angie just popped on. We'll give her a minute to get settled. And I'll take a question that I got in the chat, which was, um, 
I'm in Wisconsin, but my team is all over the country. Does my, my um, nominator need to be located in Wisconsin? So the nominator, again, needs to be a current Tempo member or Emerging Women Leaders member. So typically, yes, they would be in the Milwaukee area. Um, if you're talking about the letter, that could be from your boss who's in LA, Florida, wherever. The purpose of that letter from a leader is to really show they understand what you are getting into, that they advocate for you. Um, and I think Fran has a really great example of right now she is supposed to be in a three-hour client meeting, but her leader knows she is part of EWL and knew that this was really important for her to be on. So hopefully that answers the question. Angie, welcome. Hi, everyone. Happy will you to be share, here. Will you share a little bit about your experience with EWL? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as the slide says, I joined in 2018. Um, I like to point out that my first interaction with EWL was at the Professional Development Day in 2017. I was fresh off of maternity leave. I think I was like three weeks back from having my twin daughters who are now four. So I was in a new job at a new company as a new working mom. And um, those of you who know me have heard this story a number of times, but I can pull the memory up as clear as day in my mind on the walk in. I called my mom. I had been invited by my new manager at the time. And she was like, come check this out. I think you'll love it. And as I walked in, I called my mom and I was like, what am I doing? This is literally a gathering of some of the like brightest rising stars in Milwaukee. I am still wearing maternity pants. I don't know which way is up. I am, everything is new. What do I think I'm doing walking into this room? And for anybody who was there, fast forward to the end of the event, me with a microphone in my hands, tears in my eyes, which is not an unusual scene, crying about how I had found my people. And I spoke to so many different women that day who were also in new roles, starting a different career, new moms, experienced moms, um, just a plethora of perspectives. And while I was right, it is absolutely a gathering of the brightest rising stars in Milwaukee. I was so pleasantly surprised to learn that they're also just like very real women. And while I thought that everyone had all of their shit together and I was gonna be the hot mess coming in, I was so happy to learn that we are both um, frequently hot messes and have our shit together and they can both exist in the same happy unison. And now what, many years later, I still um, am so pleasantly surprised both in EWL and in engaging with Temple members even to see that like, not only are we willing to kind of dig behind the facade that we might put on at work or in other professional organizations, um, the women of EWL, I think part of the magic there is that they're so willing to be vulnerable and share and support. And I always say like this group of women has become my biggest cheerleaders, but also my biggest challengers. And so I know that when I report out to whether it's my connect circle or my mentor or my committee member friends, um, if I say I want to do something, they're going to hold me to it, but they're also going to support me. So they are like the ones to push me off the plank, but also be the lifeboat when I need it. And that is um, a magic that I personally haven't experienced in other what I would call networking or professional groups. Um, so I dove in fairly quickly and I have, um, I was formerly the chair of this wonderful committee with Fran, the membership nominations committee. I was so in love with the professional development day that I joined that committee and have served on there since I joined because that's like my favorite day of all Tempo EWL related activities. Um, I joined a connect circle right away that I'm still really closely in touch with and I've lost count, but we used to keep a running track of collectively our group of seven women we've seen I think at last count was six job changes, three marriages, five babies, um, a broken engagement, and I don't know, like nine promotions. And they, we've connected monthly since we were very first introduced in May-ish of 2018. And they've been, again, my cheerleaders, my challengers, my supporters. We have a text thread, we have a Snapchat thread, we have an email chain, and now are just constantly kind of checking in and 
again, just that like support group that is like-minded. They're at a similar place. I think a huge part of the magic of EWL is that it's um, people who are at a similar point in their career. And so the challenges are shared and the struggles and the successes are similar enough that you can feel like you don't need to really dive in deep every single time because they just sort of get it. Um, I have had two incredible mentors through Tempo who have helped me navigate job changes, um, just, you know, celebrated my successes with me, but also really helped me figure out how to continue my career path when I had no idea which end was up. And, you know, then there's also like just the programming, <laughs> the stuff that Tempo and EWL offer all of the time that I have said, my biggest sales pitch for Tempo and EWL is that I have yet since, what was that, September of 2017, I have yet to go to an event where I haven't either learned something new, met someone I didn't know, or was able to connect with someone that I hadn't seen. And for someone who doesn't love networking and probably isn't the biggest fan of random events where you meet people, I think that's a pretty big sales point. And again, those kids that I had when I joined EWL, they're four now. And so I would say I have like limited spare time outside of my home. So if I'm going to go to something, I need to know that it's going to be valuable. And this has always been valuable in those ways. It's always different. Sometimes it's the programming, sometimes it's the people, sometimes it's the ability to connect. But I have yet to join something where I didn't feel like I walked away with something from it. And to me, that's just the biggest, again, the biggest magic that I've seen of EWL. So that's my sales pitch. Thanks, Angie. Mm -hmm. And what I get from that is you put all of that time and effort into those things and look at what you got out, probably way more than you put in. Absolutely. I think that's, time. yes, totally. I was just going to say, that's what we always say about it is it's what you make it. I think the beauty is it's kind of a choose your own adventure book. You can get as involved as your time schedule workload allows and you can scale up and scale down. Like I'm kind of in a coasting year. I'm not leading a committee. I'm just here to enjoy things. Um, but it's definitely what you make of it. And there's so many different ways to get plugged in based on what you need. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, Angie, to Angela, yeah. and Isioma. All right, so um, here is our information, um, which if you can take a quick screenshot or jot down our info. If you wanna reach out to any of us with more questions, we will also um, take questions. We've had a couple come in here. We've got a few more minutes, so we'll address those. Um, and yeah, I wanna thank Angela Isioma and, and Angie, Angie OG committee member. You always do such a good job of bringing the heart. There's the, the logic and the magic of all of this. And thank you for, for sharing your experiences as well. Um, so with that, the one question I got uh, was just about um, recommendations for the um, letters of recommendation. Sorry, like what to include. So I bounce back to kind of some of the things I highlighted around, you know, you want that leader in your organization to speak to how you are influential up and coming, the impacts you've had. You think about our, um, our values of connecting and supporting and learning. How have you done that in your organization? Um, are you involved in your ERGs? Are you involved in mentoring programs? How have you demonstrated some of those things? So. Those would be um, the, the key things to make sure they're included. It isn't important that in that they're ticking off six years of experience or if they're not familiar with their community, with your community involvement specifically, um, you know, have them speak from what they what they know about you, but think about the, the values of um, teaching and learning, mentoring, um, leadership and growth, um, those types of things would be the things you want to get in that letter. Were there any other questions that we can answer? You're welcome to use the chat or at this point, if you would like to unmute, you are welcome to do that as well. Awkward pause. 
Um, I will say, I know Maggie and I are planning to be at the Speaker Blitz, one, because it's an awesome event, um, but two, we're going to try to do something to identify ourselves, so um, if you are there and you want to talk live, you can find us, and um, probably some of our committee members as well, so uh, that's another way to reach out if you would prefer that in person. Um, so I did get another question here. Should we be accepted into membership? What can we expect from the onboarding and training period? Um, sure, so we do a formal info session, well, similar to this, but more of a new member orientation is the right way to frame it. Um, we will perform that, which will just give you an introduction to all of the committee leads, what each of the committees are um, about, and reiterate some of your membership benefits and then how you can take the steps to get engaged in that. That's really the course of about a one, uh, one hour session similar to this one. Um, but as I mentioned, our engagement committee will also uh, link you up with someone, an existing member to help answer any questions. Um, so from an onboarding perspective, it, you again can take those steps. There will be someone to help you all along the way, but the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure you understand the full spectrum of everything that's available. Um, and that's really from day one, you remember, there's no trainee period or anything at all. You are, you are one of the group um, and have full access to all of the, um, all the benefits. Okay. That was the only other question I saw. Mara, Maggie, did you guys get anything else? Nothing here. Okay. Well, then it would seem we can uh, give everybody 10 more minutes back in this hour to wrap up. But thank you all for joining. Thank you for your interest. We are here to help if you have any questions at all. Um, hope to see a lot of your names um, in the nomination period in a couple months. Well, in a couple months, in a month. Um, <laughs> and um, have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.